Hey, uh, great. Uh, <laughs> hey, got great uh, Tuesday uh, evening. And uh, waiting for the results. And I uh, decided to do a uh, let's wait for the results together type of show uh, so that uh, we could talk a, a little bit about uh, the predictions of what's going to happen. Uh, everyone, hold on, has been calling and messaging. Uh, about But uh, it was stripping. Who's on first? Who's on second? Did you run for office? I want uh, for new president. What's <laughs> up, man? Hey, Nate, love you. When, I'm, did you run for office? Uh, I'm running for um, appraisal district, and I will be running for a school board in November right now. Uh, it's kind of trippy. Uh, it's kind of funny because I am uh, not on the ballot, and that's all, always kind of uh, a little bit on the weird side. But no, I'm not uh, on the ballot. Then uh, I'm trying to answer all the messages. She came to pick it up. Thank you so much. Awesome. Woohoo. Um, let me say it's kind of trippy. I'm gonna turn up the air conditioner a little bit because I'm feeling a little bit on the hot side. Uh it's kind of trippy because um I'm uh trying to get the results in. You can run fine little self over here. You can run your fine little self over here. I got your first base right here, baby. <laughs> Tempting offer. I might just take you up on that. Uh, waiting for the results to come in. Uh, they should be in uh, right now. Uh, we're waiting for them. We'll see what happens. Uh, election results. It's Super Tuesday at Osmo. Let's see what happens. <laughs> ah, it's trippy because these Super Tuesday, it is Super Tuesday. Uh, these elections are, I can't. I'm uh, getting like a thousand messages and uh, I can't deal with it. I'm going nuts, but waiting for the results. They should be coming in. Uh, they send me a preliminary uh, at around 7.15, which uh, they send to a lot of the different politicos. So uh, as soon as I get them, you'll get them, and uh, we'll be on, and we'll, we'll get them together. Uh, predictions. Everyone's uh, tripping out there. Uh, I think the most uh, important, <laughs> and I don't want to say the most important race out there, but one of the most watched races out there is uh the uh, race for a uh, sheriff love those frames thank you these are my meta frames that weren't working this morning because facebook went kaputs this morning when you get it we'll get it that's true and uh it's good to be back on uh facebook uh this morning we were off on facebook but such is the case oh let me send a, a an invite to uh, robert sanchez I, I haven't seen him in a while he should be interesting Oh, crap. I don't even know how I have him on my internet. 
Captain Bob. Let's call him. He's an interesting character to call. It's great to see you. It's great to be back in the States. Let's call Captain Bob. Oh, there's Frankie. Hey, Frankie. Oh, somebody else popped up. Hey, Baba. What are your predictions, Captain Bob? Captain Bob, you're on live. What are your predictions? I just sent you a link. Well, I think Rosas has a good chance for Sheriff. That's a, hey. Let me tell you, Captain Bob, that's one of the guys that I have up there. Uh, uh, one of the, I, I have just said this on a live. I just said that uh, one of the most interesting races out there, I don't know if Frankie agrees, one of the most interesting races out there is the race for Sheriff. And uh, so I just got a call like a couple of minutes before 7 o'clock, and they said, oh, no, it's going to be Trevino and Rosas in the runoff. And I said, uh, I don't think so. I think it's Rosas and uh, Garza. And Eric Garza in the runoff. That's who I have in the runoff. So you, Rosas is, Rosas is a colorful one right now after seven o'clock. I, I think. I think so too. Uh, well, I think that's so. Be interesting. That's be the congressional race. I think I'm being told by international businessman that maybe Myra Flores will take it, but it could be a, a runoff between Ma, Myra and Mauro. That hey. I'm on the hey, same Kunkel, page. Kunkel, Kunkel's a good man. He's a smart man. He's going to run for president of the United States of America. He's got Leti Gausoria's support. I understand, but I don't know what that means. But Kunkel's Nothing. a good guy. But it looks like Myra and Mauro, or Myra's going to take it because she's got Trump's endorsement yeah next race what's the next race sofia benavides i'm hearing in the community today from the older generation saying but that's enough mr sanchez i said well i don't, I, I don't, I don't she's, she's got it said, that's enough her. then we go to the tax assessor the elder gentlemen of the town are telling me that's enough too yeah and and uh that Rami Martinez, he got a lot of views on CBS. He had a lot of support. So this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm already on my, I already took a shower. I'm ready to go. I'm watching TV. I don't think I'm going to have results till 10 or 1030. What, what's your prediction on, on final results for Cameron County? Well, we're, we're supposed to get Cameron County at 715, uh, the early, early, uh, we're on a show right now. We're doing a live uh, show. We should get results from the county at 7.15. Uh, I sent you a... Will you stay in touch with me for the next hour or two? Bitch, I sent you, bitch, I sent you a link. Come on, come on, on. join the show. I'm gonna get, you want me to come on? Yeah, come on, bro. Just uh, hey, right now? Yeah, wear a shirt. Don't come out without no shirt. No, I got a shirt. Okay, let me, let me get the link. All right, puppy. Love you. Love you. Hey, Frankie, what's your most interesting race, Frankie? Uh, the interesting race that I'm following is, uh, and good thing Captain Baba is coming on. I'm going to jump off. I'll, I'll let y'all go No! Um, Frankie, why? Yeah, tres locos como que nomás no. Uh, dos. I, 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 I se la llevan. Uh, the most interesting race that I'm, that I'm following is the sheriff's race um, and the tax assessor collector because we have... Tony Aguirre, who has been in office 20, 30 plus years. Uh, we have Eddie Garcia, who has a, a strong base. Uh, he's got resources throughout uh, the county. His sister won at the county level. And then the other race, and then the other candidate is uh, Skippy. Skippy is a St. Joe product, uh, which that, that carries some weight here, especially here in the city of Brownsville. Uh, and the sheriff's race um uh, man that that has been one that since the get-go ever since eric got into office it seems as if they made his life very difficult Hell. uh Hell. i in my opinion i think it's going to be a runoff between uh sheriff garza and manny trevino that is the people that i'm around uh they're supporting uh so those are the two interesting races that i'll be following the sheriff and the tax assessor collector race what let me tell you like you know, I hear a lot about Trevino, Trevino, Trevino. I know, I, I know, Tre, I know Manny. I mean, 
a great guy, great guy. Uh, Rosa's a great guy. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I, I started to see a lot of signs, uh, you know, uh, signs all over the place. But the, the ones that have been standing out, and I, I mean, I literally got a call from a political like 15 minutes ago, and he predicted that it was going to be Trevino and Rosas in the runoff. And I said, I, I mean, you cannot, cannot discount Eric Garza. Eric Garza's got a machine out there. Well, I, I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I went to the Rivera Corpus Christi football game at Sam Stadium, and Rosas was all over the the scoreboard. That was impressive. Okay, during that historical football game, and since that moment, he's been all over the map. All over. So the map. I'm, and and he's got the most experience as I think the deputy or lieutenant. So that's interesting. Um. He was at the Sombrero Fest. He was okay. riding up. I mean, I literally, I won a, a mug out there. I showed you, Frankie, right? I, got, I won a cup out there. And, you know, I mean, there were thousands of people at Sombrero Fest and uh, just being very, very visible and very easy to talk to. I don't know if you all had a, convers uh, had a conversation with Rosas. He's just very easy to talk to, you know, very down to earth and stuff. So it's just very interesting. Um, so I, I, I'm also watching the Trump race, you know, of course he's going to slaughter Haley. Um, that's the Biden, I mean, it's given. So that, that's very interesting to me. What do you think about that Leti Garsoria precinct race against that other gentleman? I don't know the other gentleman. I mean, I know that might not be a significance here, but it's a, it's a race. Can Letty win? Letty Garcia is running for something. A, a Republican precinct. I think Maggie Ozuna is going to win her, her her little race. I voted for Maggie Ozuna. She's a friend, and uh, I love Maggie. Uh, I don't think she's going to have an issue. I didn't know Letty was running for anything. Is she a, a Democrat, running for a Democrat. She's a, she's a diehard Republican. But Frankie, good evening, Frankie. Good evening, Captain. So um, the tax assessor, we got incumbent Isaguirre. Isaguirre all the way. We got Rami. And who else? Skippy. Oh, we have, Skippy's in there. Yeah, we, we have three candidates uh, for the Democrats. We have. And what's your take? Isaguirre. What's your take? We have okay. Skippy and we got Eddie Garcia. Uh, oh, yeah. He's on the Republican ticket. Um, I was just telling the Osmo captain right before you came on that I I have Isaguirre and Eddie Garcia in a runoff in May. Um, I think Skippy is going to make it very interesting, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's Skippy and Isaguirre in the runoff. I think between Eddie Garcia, uh, board member Eddie Garcia, and Skippy, it's going to be very close. Uh, but I think uh, Isaguirre is going to be in the runoff. In my opinion. I, I, I'm wow, going that's to, a good call, Frankie. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to think that Isaguirre is going to take it without a runoff. Interesting. I think he's going to take the nomination without a runoff. I mean, he has the political machine behind him a thousand percent. I mean, I don't think I've ever. Oh, oh, some results are published. Um. Hey, uh, but before Dasmo brings up the the results, Captain Bob, who do you have in the Alex Dominguez, Ruben Cortez, Jonathan Gracia, and Carol Sanchez race? They're going up against Jenny Lopez. Have you thought about that race? You know, I really, I, I'll be honest, I haven't thought about it. It's a toss up. Let me tell you. But I can tell you right now. Alex Dominguez and Jonathan Gracia. Let me tell you. Uh, Run off Alex, Dominguez, Dominguez, Alex Dominguez, 1,151 votes, 29%. Jonathan Gracia, 28%. Ruben Cortez with a 24%. Still very, very close. Uh, Carol, our friend, uh, city commissioner for San Benito, uh, 17%. She's out. Yeah. But uh, Alex Dominguez, twenty nine percent, unexpected. And I'm so, Alex, Captain, that's a very, 
that's a very interesting race because if we remember, uh, Alex Dominguez gave up this seat to run for the uh, Senator. Senator Lucio race. Uh, so for him to be in the thick of things is very interesting. Uh, my household is a uh, pro Gracia uh, supporters. Uh, so again, the runoff, anything could happen. So it, it, glad to hear that that uh, as of as of now, uh, Jonathan Gracia seems to be in the runoff. Congratulations, uh, uh, Judge uh, Gloria Rincones. Congratulations, seventy four percent. Wow. Wow. Uh, Eric so, Garza. 36%, guys. Trevino, 26%. Wow. Rosas, 21%. Oh, my. So, it's still close. It's still close, guys. But it's going to be it's going to be uh, Trevino, uh, uh, Trevino and Garza, guys. Wow. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's 45% for Isaguirre, guys. Wow. 45%. Eddie Gar Garcia, 35%. Skippy down at 19%. So. Give, give the wow. Eddie Garcia again. Eddie Gar uh, uh, Isaguirre, 45%. Eddie Garcia, 35%. Good. That, that's, that, that was up. my call. I think that went to the... Uh, can, oh, no. can you talk to us about Sophie Benavides 60, and Alejandro? 70. No, uh, Sophie Benavides, congratulations. She'll take uh, the nomination. She's at 67%. Still not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I mean, Erica still did a 33%. Uh, congratulations, oh. JP, uh, uh, Linda uh, Salazar. She's at 68%. That is very comfortable. And Asma, we're missing a race. Uh, congratulations, uh, Abel Gomez. He's going to take it without a runoff. No. There are 55% right now. Wow. Hey, congratulations, Carlos Martinez. Came in at a strong 26%. That is amazing. Oh my God, I cannot Good believe you walked in. Bring a chair, the blog father of all blogging. Bring a chair. Do you believe this crap? God is good. Come on, so Frankie. How's Abel Gomez, 55%, coach? All right, wow. cool. 55%, guys. I, okay. Have, have 55%, guys. Can you believe that, Abel Gomez? Yeah, no doubt about it. I thought that Abel, Abel has a certain charisma. Democrats like him. He had that problem with the sheriff over who was going to staff the county courthouse. Some people thought that might hurt him, but uh, Abel is Abel. Abel is Abel. I honestly, I honestly knew, had no doubt that Abel was. Give us all, Bob. Hi, Jerry. Dr. G.F. Mikhail Scully. It's a privilege and an honor. 55% guys. But let me tell you, one of the things. No, that, what, are we, what are we talking in numbers? Are we at uh, are these early numbers? Or these what? are uh, early voting numbers have already come in. Abel Gomez, fifty five percent. I mean, there's no way that the other guys are going to catch up. Abel Gomez, congratulations, Abel, my man. Uh, we uh, the other as Linda Salazar, congratulations. How Six, big? How big did she win? Sixty eight percent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Without a doubt, not a doubt. Sophie Benavides, sixty seven percent. Not a doubt. Very good. Tony Saguirre. Andale, como va eso? 45%. Okay, I predicted a runoff between him and Eddie. What about what about Spiffy or Speedy or Skippy, Skippy? is down at 19%. <laughs> okay, he, he forces the runoff. Yes! He That's amazing. Okay, so we're going to have a runoff between Tony and Eddie. Yes, it, unless, I mean, unless these like, people waited till today to come out and vote, it's going to go into Skippy forced the runoff. 
That is amazing. Oh, yeah, the yeah. big question is, and who's going to reach out and call Skippy for support? Talk, talk to is, us about the conversion. For support. Right, Eddie, Eddie, what? Eddie or Isaguirre? Coach? Who do I go with? I've been supporting Eddie. Eddie? Not, yeah, not because I'm against Tony. If you read what I've been writing, I've been promoting. I think it's time for a change. Uh, I think Tony's done a hell of a job. I have not written anything negative about him. And I think uh, I like the job that I like the job that Eddie's done at the BISD. And uh, of course, we agree on everything, don't we? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm with Eddie. I've been with Eddie the whole time. Well, Erasmo, could you give us, hey, Erasmo, could you give us Henry County numbers for for Mida race? Uh, the Mida yes. race. Yes. Let me... Let's see if Mida's going to win without a runoff. That's uh, the, that's the question. Uh, so far, uh, let me let me get down. I'm trying to find the, the damn. Uh, fudge, damn, Mida can't send it. Uh, I'm trying to find them. Hold on, uh, this is the Democratic primary. Let me go oh, back. You have to go to a whole new. Yeah, let me go back into the, the Republican primary. Since I got uh, in late, how was the sheriff's race going? The sheriff race right now. It is. Uh, let me go to the Republicans. We'll go to the Republicans. Uh, Trump, of course, eighty-five percent, eighty-five percent in Cameron County. Crazy. Well, I'm on the Republicans. Yeah, Maida Flores, eighty-three percent. No, wow, eighty-three percent. Wow, crazy number. Crazy numbers, man. Gee, what do the other ones get? Two, uh, three, and four percent. Uh, Lauda, uh, Cisneros, eight percent. Mauro, five percent. Kunkel, three percent. Eighty. Wow. She had, what she's done. And you see it in the numbers. Uh, I was surprised Juan Montoya on his L run run or L run run in 2020, 20,000 Democrats voted and 5,000 Republicans voted. This time, not counting today's uh, votes, this time 11,000 Democrats and 8,000 Republicans. So that gives you an inside the strides that the Republicans are making in this area. Deborah Bell, congratulations, Deborah Bell, will be the next chair for uh, the Republican. How big was that one? 63%. Okay, well, wow. Matt, Matt hey. had a little bit of a Good fight. For her. A little bit. Hey, uh, no, but she was riding Midas co coattails. Yeah, she was riding something out there, that's for sure. But uh, let me say, uh, Captain Bob, you were asking about Leti Garzoria. 50 to 50, 19 votes and 19 votes. <laughs> What <laughs> the hell? Chair, what? Chair. Let this every vote counts. Oi, Mano, give me all the two big ones: the District Thirty Seven and the Sheriff's Race. That's the uh, that's the one we just talked about. We'll go back to it right now. Okay, uh, Eric. Garza. Okay, hold on, hold hold on, hold on. I must exit. I enjoyed this show. I got my results. Jerry McHale, I love you, Doctor GF. Hey, I'm a real doctor, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you for inviting me. You all have a good evening. Take care, Bob. Adios. Thank you. Uh, uh, in the, the sheriff race, which I thought was going to be the most exciting one of all, uh, that one is stuck with um, the sheriff ahead, of course. What is he? What's, what's, what's his percentage? He's going to go into a runoff with Trevino. With uh, Trevino. He, yeah, he's at 36%. Okay. Trevino's at 26%. Rosas is at 21%. Okay. And signs is what about 15 or something? 15%. Okay. I, you know, I, I would talk to different people, and there were a lot of people. I don't know Trevino at all, but there were a lot of people that said he's a dark horse. He's a dark horse. Ooh. And Ooh. Trevino. Oh, I predicted or Stitcher. Of which you're a board member. Yeah, of course. Okay, we're 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 very proud. We're member. studying Frankie's uh, application right now. Um, Please, don't I say. predicted that nobody would get forty percent, and that the runner-up could get as little as twenty-five percent. So that, yeah, you, uh, straight up. Right and, on. and one of the things that I've always appreciated about Stage, that's one of the reasons why I, I I was desperate to become a board member on there, is that I mean it's like. A minimal percentage point that they've been off, which is really impressive in comparison to all the other stupid polls that come out here, uh, you know, normally in this area. Stitcher has been on point, and uh, congratulations on Stitcher that. Stitcher has done a good job. Missed a few, 
I mean, there's a few. Very few. But, you know, it's like when you make predictions, you can miss 100 but get one right. Or, you know, the there's going to be a world war in 2025 and suddenly, you know, people think you're credible, even though you missed 100 other ones. But, yeah, but that, <laughs> that one makes the more. What about uh, District 37? Oh, uh, we talked about that, Frankie, right? Uh, Alex, um, Alex Dominguez, Dominguez and John DeGrafia. Yeah. Okay. I caught, yeah. What's the percentages on those? Like, Let me go back into there. Uh, like 35, 30. Uh, Gloria Rincones, congratulations, Gloria Rincones. Oh, uh, yeah. How did that, what was the percentage on that one, She Mano? killed it 74%. Woo! My Woo! goodness, that was a killer. Congratulations, Judge uh, Gloria Rincones. That, there was no doubt on that one. Uh, let's go back into the, that uh, 37. Oh, let me go back in there. That one. Again, Tony Zaguirre, 45%. Eddie Garcia, 35%. Skippy, 20%, bro. Yeah, no, no. That was going to be his role, whether or not he could force a runoff. And he did. He did force a runoff. And let me tell you, congratulations. I don't even know if Eddie Garcia was the one that uh, promoted him to be on there. But if he did, congratulations. That was very, very, very smart move. Uh, let me go. Uh, we're talking about which one? Uh, 37. Uh, 37. Uh, Dominguez and... Oh, uh, we talked about Avelardo, right? Avelardo, not right. a doubt. Um, 37. While you're looking for that, if, if I could if I could ask you, uh, Jerry, do you think, you know, to, going back two years, do you think now Maida has a chance against Vicente? Again, this, this district goes all the way up into Corpus area. Um, do you think she has a chance this year? Or is, is the Democratic Party looking strong in this? Particular you, race. Have to, you have to consider that that uh, at the top of the card, you're going to bring out more Democrats. She lost by 10,000, almost 11,000 votes last time. OK, uh, the 83 percent is impressive because the uh, Gonzalez people, they said, well, we want to run against her because she's the weakest. She well, is. obviously, that was a backdoor strategy, right? Her 83 percent attests to the control like Trump that she has over the local Republicans. But see right now, Trump controls everything because he has all these elections taking place. So he's center on the TV as well as all his problems. But once that's settled, once people are bombarded with a democratic version of what this country should be, the dynamics are going to change. I, in my heart of hearts, I don't think she has a chance, okay? I don't think she has a chance. Now, the question is, it's like all these elections. What's the percentage? What's the difference? And for me, and I was talking to a, a, a major Democrat locally, is that change in the number of Democrats and Republicans. Now, the Democrats say, well, we didn't have the state senator running. Uh, well, neither did the Republicans. Um, Gomez wasn't running. Um, they had, you know, these excuses at the high level. You didn't have the, the Democrats turning out where according to him, when it's the general election, the, the Democrats will turn out in bigger numbers. But I want to see the final numbers because uh, probably one third of the vote that affects uh, Maida's election comes from uh, Hidalgo. Okay. So what are the numbers there? And, and that's where Vicente was. Uh, the the congressman from that area, and right. he, uh, he's strong in that area. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, you know politics at the national level how they affect uh, Maida's race in particular. And and you make an interesting point. Could Maida, Maida make up those ten thousand votes in these two years? I think that's going to be very difficult. But it's interesting if in Cameron County and even Hidalgo County. There have seen uh, the gap narrowing between Democrats and Republicans. We've never seen, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I've never seen in my lifetime a Republican this strong in our local area. Is the tie changing? Well, uh, well, it's hard I mean, to we say right now, but to make up 10,000 yeah. votes is going to be very difficult. We can talk Carlos Casco, Tony Garza. Okay. They were powerful Republicans. That doesn't mean that Democrats or the general public won't vote for a Republican. I just see Vicente stronger among the Democrats this time because he's had two years to consolidate. 
when he ran last time, it wasn't like a Lucio running or it wasn't like a Vela running. I mean, he was really unknown to most right. Democrats here. But like I said, you have to get the numbers from Hidalgo as well as, you know, Willis and Kennedy because they, they, they can make a difference. But uh, I don't, I don't know whether she will do better or do the same. But, you know, the one thing about Vicente, he knows how to campaign and he knows how to spend money. A and, lot of money. And the, and the deal with the deal with Maida, there's just a lot of people that dislike. She's like Trump. There's a lot of people out there who just dislike Trump, almost hate Trump. And in fact, you know, you have your Trump haters. There are a lot of people here that dislike Maida, okay? Uh, Vicente is more polished as a politician, but uh, it's definitely one of those that, uh, hey, let's put the teams on the field and see who wins. It's not one of those, well, we're not even going to play the game because we already know who's going to win. Uh, I give her uh, an outside shot at it. But I think once the Democrats, you know, have their their candidates from, from the president on down, now we're into the into the general campaign season. I think we're going to see uh, a change in dynamics for the Democrats. But I'm prejudiced, okay? So take it with a grain of salt. Very prejudiced. <laughs> Let me tell you, not, not not a lot of major surprises in the results, but it's always interesting. The sheriff race was the most interesting to me because a lot of people were, you know, uh, discounting this day for the Eric Garza. I mean, they were counting him out even uh, as soon as he got elected. And I said, you cannot discount Eric Garza. Well, not everybody reads Juan Montoya. Okay. <laughs> If Eric, you read Montoya, this guy should have been kicked out of office, you know, three years ago. Eric Garza but, is a powerhouse. Know, but you know what, Manu? Everybody that I spoke with said it would be Eric and somebody else. Yeah. And, and that surprised well, me. I, doubt. I didn't think I didn't think that Eric would do as well. Oh. I thought he was vulnerable. No. I, and, I've but, always thought it was Eric Garza and someone else. I actually thought it was going to be Eric Garza and Rosas. And Rosas didn't do that 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 bad either. I mean, I mean, his numbers are up there as well. I mean, Rosas, uh, let me go back into his. Rosas. Is the consensus uh, that Rosas is going to jump on Team Trevino? Yes. Uh, Rosas will jump on Trevino. Uh, Ronnie is going to jump on Trevino. Well, they're related. Trevino Ooh. and Sainz are related. Oh. I don't know they're related through marriage, but there's a definitely a, a relationship there. Well, I mean, you look at you look at someone like Rosas. I mean, he works with. Garza at the sheriff's office, and he wouldn't be running if he was in his heart of hearts sympathetic to Garza. So it will be interesting. It's going to be an interesting race. To it's me, Trevino's, like I said, I don't know Trevino. I haven't seen him. They say he is from Brownsville. And like I said, there were a number of people who told me that, watch out, Trevino's going to surprise. And I thought, you know, I mean, Rosas, I mean, equally, as the Gasto mucho dinero. A lot of money. And if you look at his Facebook, he was everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, Signs everywhere. worked hard. Signs uh, worked really hard. Uh, I'm really surprised. I mean, it's still close. I still, uh, I, but uh, the, it's going to be Eric and uh, Trevino in a runoff, without a doubt. And uh, that is going to be very telling. It's, go it's not going to be an easy race for Eric Garza. Uh, because if Rosa's people come on, Signs people come on and they go out there and support uh, Trevino. Trevino will be our next sheriff. The only advantage, not the only advantage, but the advantage that he has, like all incumbents have to me, is in a runoff, the numbers are much lower. The numbers are much lower. So someone like Tony Zagire, you know, he's sitting at 45. Uh, of course, we know, we know Eddie's gonna work his ass off because he got, he has Gabby there to help him also. Gabby's a workhorse. Okay, yeah. No, they're campaigners. Yeah, Gabby's so, a workhorse. And so that's gonna be a close race. Um and see like I said, I don't know Trevino. I don't know him. I, I have do you know him? Yeah I I, I mean i I know it, uh Trevino. I've met up with him a couple of times. A, a great guy, a great individual. Uh you know Eric is kind of trippy with me because 
you know, we've had this kind of like in and out type of relationship. After he became sheriff, he became very friendly with me and everything. And uh, very, I it doesn't matter going and very, very cool. So I don't have an issue with Eric. It's going to be interesting because one of the things that I think is, is important, coach, is that it, it's who comes back out and reaches out to all of us. You know, because get us or no, you have a following. Frankie has a following. Captain Bob, not that much, but a little bit. But, uh, you know, we all have a following. It's well, he has got Zordio, right? Yeah, he's got Zordio, who's got 19 votes. <laughs> but she's at 50-50. But, you know, it's who reaches out and says, hey, guys, uh, help us out out here. You know, and that's going to be an interesting type of situation out there. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that, uh, you know, our, our our all our phones are going to be buzzing uh, tomorrow and uh, the next couple of days. In regards to you know, let's get uh, let's get these guys. Well, I think what you just said a few minutes ago. I don't think we saw any shockers. Uh, the no, only one I would eighty percent. What's that? Well, okay, maybe in the numbers, but not in the the victors. Okay, right. there was someone that upset someone else that we expected. The only one I would go back to Trevino. Uh, Trevino surprised me a little bit. I thought Rosas, with all the money and, and and time he had spent, I thought that signs. But like I said, as I've said now, you know, three or four times at nauseum, I don't know Trevino. He's the one candidate I don't know. But as I said before, there were people saying, "Hey, be careful, cuidado." Ese hombre is un dark horse. Alex Dominguez and Jonathan Gracia in a runoff. What, what are their numbers? Uh, jo Alex Dominguez is at 29. Jonathan Gracia is at 28. Coach. Yeah, boy. And uh, oh. they're only, uh, Alex is only ahead by 31 votes, bro. 31. What about who's number three? They can't be too far behind. Ruben Cortez. Is at what? At uh, 24%. Okay. He's, you know, they has an outside shot. Yeah. I mean, it could happen. Election day, no, but uh, he's still down by a hundred well, hundred votes. Okay, well, you'd still probably have about three thousand votes out. It's gonna be interesting say, because usually it's about two thirds the early vote. Well, I think what, what helps them, these guys, is that uh, they have uh, South Padre Island and Port Isabel, and a lot of these people are, are the more the conservative. Let's wait right. till election day. Let's wait till come out till vote because we don't believe in the early voting. So maybe a big old chunk of these individuals are going to come out. I just don't think I, – I really believe that it's going to be Alex Dominguez and Jonathan Gracia in a runoff. Then it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and that's going to be a good runoff. Yeah, because both of them are going to spend boohoo's of cash. And they're both capable. Yeah. The, yeah, you know, Jonathan Gracia is more of a, the reserve type of guy. I think uh, Alex uh, Dominguez is a more of a, hey, coach, what's up, and everything else. I mean, I don't know what type of relationship we have with Jonathan Gracia. I don't much, you know. Uh, I I saw a change in him. I, when he was younger, he had a little touch of arrogance to him. But very I've explaining. seen him. But he's married. He has a child now. He seems to have don't know how that calmed happened. down a little bit. That's awesome. Well, you get less sleep, Mano. Hmm? When you have a child, you get less sleep. Well, you should know about that. you got like a thousand of them all over the place. <laughs> Uh, Abel Gomez, Abel, man. Yeah, Congratulations, super. bro. Congratulations, Abel. Great job. I, I never Great said job. Abel, is, and this is what, and, and, you know, I, I I still find it so hard to believe that people want to run against Abel. Abel is just this down-to-earth guy, you know, this just down-to-earth guy that, you know, I, I would run into him at anywhere, and he's the type of guy that will pat you on the back, oh, like, yeah. hey, what's going on, and have a little cool conversation with you, you know, not patronizing or anything but it's kind of hard to run against what, what i go about a politician he knows all the politics huh? yeah he he's knows a politician what's that he's a politician what what i'm surprised what I'm with surprised. is how long until he actually he's been flirting with the idea of running for sheriff sure. uh his numbers have been strong these past two elections um i think how? that if eric garza prevails uh, in the runoff, I do anticipate Abel Gomez in four years challenging uh, Eric Eric Garza because again, Abel is strong. Uh, his numbers have been strong, uh, and he's he could only he, he could only gain more momentum than what he already has now. Well, like you just said, that rumor's been out there, and he contemplated running for sheriff. Mm -hmm. But when he looked at this field, I'm sure he thought, no, no, I can't compete with well, this field. Don't you, you think know, with that kind of money or with the money? But don't you think that he would have done really well 
uh, against all these individuals? It's hard to say because I thought all four were solid individuals. Yeah. So oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. it's hard, you know, it wasn't like, you know, we had uh, Rincones against Shergo, okay? Or yeah, or Benavides against, you know, como se llama ese titere? Eric. Hernandez. Er Erica. 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 Or <laughs> Linda Salazar. You know, everybody said that uh, is El Joe. Uh, Elizarde. Elizarde. Joe, Elizarde. You know, he's a nice guy. He's a great guy. But I love Joe. There's a famous, I don't know if you know this one, uh, famous saying in baseball, nice guys finish last. Okay. That's an old baseball saying. Frankie knows that. He played baseball. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend, uh, it's the, what's your name? Uh, Maggie Ozuna. She's losing. Losing what? Rainbow Precinct? For for. Uh, for a precinct chair against uh, some guy, Robert Camacho. She's down uh, a couple of votes, but again, there's still votes coming in today. So that's still too close. Uh, she's uh, 55 to 44. Uh, Leti, Leti Garzoria, 50-50. Now, what precinct was she running out she of? She was running, uh, again, she was running for uh, precinct chair. Shoot. I wish you wouldn't have asked me that. Captain Boy, Mano, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. on Vicente, check how many votes has he received, and then check how many Maida's received. See, we got a, a feel for that. Uh, Maida has received Maida. Uh, 6,600 votes here in Cameron County. 6,600 in Cameron okay. County. And Vicente? And Chente. Chente con la gente has received 9,800. But again, he was the only candidate uh, running on the mm. Democratic side. Right, right. That, not good for Chente. No, Frankie, you know, poses the idea, is it possible that she can be competitive this time? Here, and you look at the numbers, and the numbers show that she can be competitive. I remember when Eddie Gonzalez was a treasurer for the county. Remember when he was a treasurer when Carlos Cascos was a county judge? Okay. Well, at the last second, Eddie switched parties from Democrat to Republican. And Gilberto Hinojosa knew or thought this might happen and told David Bentoncourt, be ready. And if he switches at four. 59, register. Caliente. Well, anyway, so people thought, oh, Chingao, Pinche, David, what does he know about economics, you Nothing. know? And where, what's his name, was an accountant. And so anyway, they have the primary. Well, the primary comes out, Eddie gets 1,500 votes, and David gets 12,000. I mean, as a Republican, Eddie got 1,200, and, and David got 12,000. I mean, that's the key. That's the key. How how democratic is this going to remain? I always feel that Hidalgo is more democratic than than Cameron. Uh, Willis and Kennedy, uh, I think they're a little bit more Republican, but they don't have the big numbers. Yeah. No. Uh, Abel will be the next sheriff in Cameron County. Uh, yeah. Right, Frankie? I would say in the next four, eight years, I think he's he's in line. I think in the next four years, we're going to see Abel as the next sheriff of Cameron County. And I think very well deserved. I think he, you know, I think Abel has been very, very smart. I think he's played, played it very, very, very well. You know, very, very reserved. He's made a lot of friends out there. I think this next race between Eric and uh, Eddie, the guys, Oh, Trevino Manuel. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Eric and uh, Trevino, that's going to be very, very telling. If it stays the if it stays the state quo, Manny will win the runoff. Yes. Uh, do you think that uh, this is actually a great, great question? Do you think that uh, if it stays the way it is right now with the numbers uh, as they are, do you think uh, Manny Trevino will win the runoff against Eric Garza? I think so. If I could go before coach, I, I think so. It's not looking good 
for Eric Garza. Again, we have seen what the commissioner's court has done to Eric Garza. They handicapped him. They didn't allow him to hire. They, they, they slashed his budget. Uh, and then you look at the amount of candidates that he has. And, and Coach just made a, a very interesting point. Uh, science and Trevino, there's some relation there. So where do you think that 50% is going to go to? It's going to go to Manny Trevino. What about Rosas? Do you think Rosas is willing to throw his support against Eric Garza? Or no. would he be promised a position uh, uh, with Manny Trevino? Uh, so I, it doesn't look good for uh, Sheriff Garza moving forward. And the way it looks right now, if, if um, uh, Police Chief Manny Trevino is smart, he's on the phone right now with Rosas, with Science, and, and strategizing right now. Uh, so it doesn't look good for Eric Garza, in my opinion. This is the God, the blog father right there. Uh, Coach Trevino. I, I, I personally still would favor Garza. I think Garza, he's, he's run a, a bunch of uh, tough elections. He knows what it takes to win elections. Uh, he's a smooth talker. Uh, apparently, you know, the negative commentary that Juan writes regularly on Rune Rune is not having any impact. Not too much. Because you're lucky the Herald doesn't cover anything anymore. Zero. So, you know, it's up to the bloggers, up to uh, you guys. You to get uh, it. Us all, all, us, all us, all us. Okay. But I, I would still, I would still favor Garza. And, because and, he's got the four years under his belt. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's a powerhouse. He's a and, powerhouse. And you don't, you don't carry many votes with you. If no. I say that I'm going to endorse so and so, particularly as a defeated candidate, you don't carry that much no. impact. Uh, man, uh, Manny's uh, son is here. Uh, Manny, uh, Manny's amazing, uh, and I agree. Uh, I, I agree that he has a good chance. I think he has an amazing chance. What what your dad has to do, Manny, is he has to bring us all together, Manny. And and I say this with all humility. He has to bring us all together. He cannot think right now that because he is so close and he Rosas is uh, uh, has a high percentage uh, that the, all these other individuals are going to come in because that's the mistake that a lot of people make that, oh, well, uh, because, uh, you know, Eric is down by this certain percentage. Everyone is going to go on the bandwagon. He cannot sit on those laurels. He needs Manny, Manny. And I say this well, he needs to bring us all together and say, hey, guys, let's all sit down at a table. Let's all work this campaign because Eric Garza is a powerhouse in regards to being a political. It's like Silvia Garza Perez. Silvia Garza Perez, a lot of people don't like her, may not like her. She's a friend of mine. They may not like her, but she's a powerhouse. You have to respect how strong they are at being a politician. Eric Garza is a strong politician. He didn't become sheriff, you know, well, I mean, he My beat chance. a legend. He beat a legend. He beat a, a and then legend. he had to beat a Republican. I would say, Manuel Jr., what your dad needs to do is improve his name ID. I, I don't think his name ID is that strong. And that's why I didn't really expect him to do as well as he did. Yeah. He, uh, To me, if I were in his shoes over the next couple of weeks, I'd really push my name ID, and, and then obviously try to get the support of the other two candidates. And that's where we can, and that's where we can play a part of it. Because one of the things that coach says is very true. I heard, and this is, and I said, Oh no, well, uh, Manny Trevino is very strong in Harlingen, which is great. You could be very, very strong in Harlingen and the San Benito area, Los Fresnos, Rio Hondo. And that's great. Manny Trevino needs an Erasmo Castro, a coach, a Frankie, uh, needs is going to need a Juan Montoya, and as and and let me t let me say this and again because it's something that I think a lot of people fall victim to. They may tell Manny Trevino, let me tell your dad, Manuel. Let me tell him, no, 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 don't don't talk to Coach, don't talk to Frankie, don't talk to Erasmo. It's a mistake. Tap into the power of what we can bring to the table, and, I, and I'm not saying this in an arrogant way or because we think we're better. We have a, a certain base. We have a potential to make the name more known out there. And no one's tapping into that source, unfortunately. So I would say in these next couple of weeks, 
Let's have a sit down. Let's talk. Let's see where we can go out. And the, uh, look, and, and again, whoever comes to the table first, you know. Whoever. Well, the other thing, too, as useless as the Herald is, as useless as the Valley Morning Star is, useless. I, I would still, in, in your dad's situation, I take out a quarter page ad and, and explain to the people who I am. I'm in this runoff because, like I said, to me, his biggest challenge, his biggest obstacle is name ID. Yeah. He does not have Eric's name ID. And let me say right now, I love this woman. Kinesea. Lulu. Hi, Lulu. I love, Bezos, Bezos, I love Bezos, Mo, Lulu. <laughs> I, I am going to say this right now. Manny has my support because I love this woman. She knows it. But uh, yeah, uh, to Manny, uh, Manny Jr., uh, I, I will talk to your dad this week. I promise you. But uh, it's, it, it, you know, and this is one of the things that I constantly say out there. It, it, it's time for this community to come together and start saying, hey, guys, let's start getting candidates out there that are a little bit different, a little bit different this day from, uh, from the norm and a little bit different from that little political machine that's out there. That's one of the conversations I've had with Coach along the way. You know, we've got to get candidates that are not a part of the same little system. And the only way that we're going to do it is to come together. But uh, congratulations to everyone out there. And again, uh, not Manny's Manny's dad is hot. <laughs> I would cannot double concur. T. Cannot concur. Double T. Okay. Cannot concur on that. I do not know him that well. Is that is that uh, that's uh, Lulu or Larry? No, that's uh, Elvis. <laughs> But uh, I, I don't think that there were many, many surprises out there. I honestly thought it was going to be Rosas and uh, uh, Eric Garza in the runoff. Um, there's still some votes coming in today, guys. We might have a little bit more information tonight at 9 p.m. Uh, I think uh, it's a good time for us right now to wait till 9 p.m. We have a good hour for me and Coach to go out there and have a bite to eat and uh, maybe some libations. Some? <laughs> a lot. And... Uh, <laughs> And then come back together at nine. Frankie, are you available at nine nine o'clock? I believe so. Uh, I'll be around. So as the so guys, we're going to sign off right now. Uh, again, we've already put out the primaries right now at nine o'clock. We should have some of the numbers coming in in regards to uh, election day, and uh, you know we'll t talk a little bit more crap out there. I mean that's what we're good at talking crap. Uh, maybe Astigia, you know, will uh, share with us some uh, more of the numbers that, uh, you know, they've, uh, you know, uh, come out with and share with us so we'll be able to share out. So uh, I, I think it's a good time for us to cut off now at uh, and uh, a little bit before 8 o'clock. Uh, give us the opportunity to head off up to Cobbleheads or some other place and, uh, you know, get a couple of uh, sandwiches out there, uh, you know, a couple of drinks and, uh, and get ready for 9 o'clock. Guys, it's Super Tuesday, guys. And it's always amazing, but it's more amazing to have a legend like uh, Coach. Because if it wasn't for Coach, uh, there wouldn't be a Frankie, there wouldn't be an Adasmo, uh, you know, there wouldn't be a true source of information for the city of Brownsville, for our community, because we have no local media, we have no news we have no browser there's nothing here if it wasn't for the blogs if it wasn't for the podcast if it wasn't for this we would know nothing about what really happens in the city of browser so again no doubt about that and, and thanks for giving me more credit than i deserve no you do and again and and i'm not you know and I, i've been very critical about coach coach has, has been out there and critical about me he's not supported me in, in some of the races but I love this man. Uh, this this man is the number one reason why I decided to run for office, why I decided to start the page, why I decided to fight the system. And again, you always give credit where credit is due. This man is a legend. This man is amazing. And uh, I love this man. And I will always love this man. I love so, you, Frankie. Uh, Frankie, not so much. I don't like Frankie that much, but that's a different story. Guys, we'll be back at 9 p.m. Amazing night. Amazing, amazing night. We'll see you with El, Roci El Rocinante. <laughs> Siempre Rocinante. We'll see if we'll have more results uh, later on tonight at 9 p.m. Guys, be good to each other. Continue to be good to me. God bless. Andale. Adios. Besos. Besos.